Hey everybody, Jay at Lock and Lube, and today we are talking about loading and priming your grease gun. We're gonna walk you through all the steps to get any grease gun loaded, primed, and ready to use. We've got all of our Lock and Lube models on display here. Uh, we're gonna be using our LNL 351, this lever gun, for demonstration purposes. But these instructions are good no matter what kind of grease gun you have, whether it's lever or pistol grip, hand-operated, pneumatic, cordless, battery-operated, mini, doesn't matter. The process is gonna be virtually the same for all of them. So with that, let's get into it. Here we have our LNL 351 lever gun that we'll use today. Now inside any of our lock and loop grease guns, you are going to find some priming instructions. We're gonna reference these throughout the video so you can follow along at home if you've got a new lock and loop gun that you are getting loaded up for the first time. And here's our hose assembly. And here's the grease gun. The first step is gonna be unscrewing the barrel from the bottom of the grease gun. So we'll set the head down. Now for all our lock and loop grease guns, we have a notch on the bottom to pull the rod out and lock onto. Other models might have a tab uh, or some other way to secure the rod as it comes out. So you're gonna extend the T-rod all the way out until you can lock it off to the side. There's a little notch on the bottom there. You can see there that it's sits off to the side and that's how it stays locked. Now the next step is going to be loading up our tube of grease. This top with the plastic cap, this side is going in first. The other side with the uh, pop top, like an old beer can or a tube of tennis balls, this is gonna sit on the top. Little trick I like to do, you take the plastic cap, leave it face up, and then as you pull this top off, scrape that clean, and then you put this right down on that plastic cap and you don't make a mess. We've got our tube of grease. We're gonna insert the cartridge here and push it down until it's pretty close and snug. The lip on the top of the cartridge is bigger so it does rest on the top of the tube right there. So now that we've got the grease cartridge inserted into the grease gun, do not release your T-pull yet. First, we need to get the barrel screwed back on to the head of the grease gun. So for those of you following along on your lock and loop priming instructions, we're already on step seven. Nice work. Here we go. Threads here. I like to uh, kind of reverse thread it, like go in clockwise until you feel those threads match up and then give it some turns. Now that this is on, the goal here is to clear that air pocket out so that the grease fills the head and starts pumping. So I'm gonna release the rod back in and get our hose assembly connected to the head of the gun. Now, if you're reloading a grease gun, obviously your hose assembly is probably already on your grease gun. But here for the lock and loop guns, you're gonna need 14 millimeter wrenches. Uh, this has the swivel pre-installed into the head of the grease gun, which makes for really easy installation here. A thing to remember with all grease hoses is that the NPT, the National Pipe Thread Standard, is tapered. So while you do want to get it snug, that tapered thread is going to secure itself, and so you don't need to over-tighten it necessarily. If you find that you're leaking a little grease or something like that, you can always snug it up a little more, but um, no need to over-tighten it. Get my wrenches on here. Give it a couple turns. And again, just snug enough that that's gonna be plenty tight. Now with the lock and loop models, we have our loop and lock storage zerk, so I can store that there. On the 351 in particular, that grease uh, zerk actually allows grease to pass through, so we could even load and prime the whole grease gun with this thing connected. Now, I wouldn't recommend it because for that initial air pocket, you don't really wanna be pushing that back into the grease gun, but just an opportunity to mention the loop and lock to you. We've got our follower rod in, and the next step is just to start pumping until grease comes out the end. Now, remember that this is the first time this grease gun has ever been loaded, and as a result, there's a lot of air that we need to move out of the way in the head. With a hand pump grease gun like this, you have a nice feel for it, so you will feel the grease start to move into the hose assembly. You wouldn't have that with a cordless gun. You'd just be holding down the trigger of the gun, letting it cycle to push that air out of the way. 
And you know what, there it is. I feel the grease going into the hose. I'm gonna set the coupler onto my handy uh, trash pile disc there so that when the grease does start coming through, I don't get our nice table all dirty. And there, the grease is flowing through the hose. We've worked out all the air pockets. You can see we get some grease out there. So now this grease gun is loaded and primed and pumping grease. Now, occasionally when you go to prime a grease gun, you'll find that an air pocket is preventing the grease from flowing through the hose and out the coupler. When you go to squeeze the grip or move the lever, you'll feel that there's no resistance, that it just feels like nothing's happening. Now, if you bought a grease gun from Lock & Lube, included are our priming instructions. And on the back of that sheet are helpful tips and tricks for what to do if you encounter an air pocket. We'll run through it here so you can see. The first step is you might find that unscrewing the barrel a little bit gives the air a channel to escape uh, and allows the grease to start flowing. What you're trying to help here is that up at the top, there's some air that's blocking the grease from moving into the hose. So any channel you can give it to get out of the way uh, will help that grease start flowing. So you unscrew the barrel a couple turns and that may not have come through on the audio here, but I could actually hear some of the air escaping. I could hear it uh, passing out through the side there. So um, let me see, I'll give this a couple pumps. You can see how there's still a lot of action on that. The grease isn't actually going into the hose yet. So I'll close that up. And now I'll push down on my air bleeder valve. Uh, these push type valves are the most common. What's gonna happen is when you push down on this, it moves an O-ring down and out of the way and gives the air a channel to escape. The other type that we offer is a screw bleeder, which is featured on our LNL 351. Now the screw bleeder here, unlike the push button, is actually has uh, cut threads on the side of it so that when you go to unscrew it, the lack of threads on that side give the grease a channel to come out. Now if you look closely here, you'll see that grease is actually coming out of this. That's because that follower plate is putting pressure upwards on the grease. It just found a new path of least resistance to get out of the way. So the fact that grease is coming out through that bleeder valve tells me there's no air in there. This grease gun's already primed and ready to go. So I'll screw this in, make a little bit of a mess that I will clean up later. So here we'll push down on the air bleeder valve. And sometimes you may even hear a pop or a noise of air moving out. That's not the case here, but I'll go ahead and try to pump and see if we can get grease moving. Oh, I think I feel it going into the hose here. You can feel the, the handle kind of engage. That's the sign that the grease is moving in. For purposes of this video, let's just pretend that didn't work. So the last step that you will need to do if after trying both of those things is still not working is to use your follower rod to apply pressure up on the grease. So for all the grease guns that Lock & Lube sells, the follower rod can be locked to the plate at the bottom of your grease. You pull out the rod and start twisting it, rotating it slowly and you'll feel it drop about a sixteenth of an inch. When that happens, give it a quarter turn and make sure it's secure. So now you'll see I can't actually push this back in. So what I'm gonna do is put it down on the table, push my air bleeder valve down, and now push up on the grease to try to force any air that's in the way out through that air bleeder valve. Now, once I've put some pressure on it, I can rotate the follower rod and it'll go right back in. And now, start pumping. And sure enough, uh, grease is now moving through the hose. We've moved all the air out of the way and our grease gun is primed and working. So there you have it. Those are your tips and tricks for forcing air pockets out of the way and getting a grease gun loaded and primed. Now one other little tip for you. When you do go pull the rod out, this also gives you a sense of how much grease is left. Because the rod is gonna bottom out at that follower plate, you can see this is nearly a full tube. If you were to pull this out and it only came out that far, you'd know, okay, the follower plate is all the way up here. We're nearing the end of our tube. Better go get one ready. So there you have it. Tips and tricks to get your grease gun working. Thank you for watching this video. 
For more information on loading and priming a grease gun or any of the products that Lock and Lube offers, please check out lockandlube.com. Oh. <laughs>